there was certain riders that, that weren't all together um, you know, weren't over, all together over the moon with having to ride with me as a partner. There was one particular rider who I won't mention his name, but um, I didn't know this at the time. But I found out afterwards that this man, how he used to motivate himself to ride every evening in the six days. With you as a partner? No, not just with me. This was in general. Right. How he would motivate himself is that he used to listen to speeches of Adolf Hitler before the start. He, he, would, he had recordings of Adolf Hitler speeches and that's how he... That's not normal. Well, that's how he motivated himself. So, in spite of all that, we rode and we didn't do too bad, but I think that if he had the choice, it wouldn't have been me he would have rode with, but there it is. Let's move on to Herne Hill for the 12-hour marathon. Tandems act as pacemakers for the riders. John Smith, number seven, moves up to pass some of his rivals. He's been going hard at it all the way, and that sponge is more than welcome. Historically, cycling has always been predominantly a white sport. Looking at cycling from the 1940s and 1950s, nearly all competitors and spectators are white. However, this hasn't changed. The Tour de France, arguably one of the toughest sporting events in history, the majority of riders are white, and this hasn't changed since the birth of the race in 1903. The first ever black cyclist to compete in the Tour de France was only in 2011. That man was Johan Genet. I want to find out why there are very few black professional cyclists. I want to start at Herne Hill Velodrome in South London, home of the 1948 Olympic Games. I spoke to Peter Catamol, ex-London manager for British Cycling and current chairman of Velo Club de Londres, who run Herne Hill Velodrome. I asked him why he thought there are very few black professional cyclists. I think it's a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy because there aren't the role models. And so until you get more in the Tour de France, there, you won't get the numbers starting at the bottom. Well, as I say, you know, if, if you look, you're going to look at the Tour de France and go, that's a white sport. Yeah. Now, I think some of that is historic. OK, it's been built up over years that... You know, when I started cycling in the early 70s, okay, if you were a young man, yeah, white, didn't matter, or if you were female, you could not join a bike club. Most bike clubs have rules that forbade that. Now, I'm not saying they also had rules that forbade black people joining, but you had to be, you know, put forward by someone and seconded by someone and so on and so forth. So if you didn't know someone in the bike club, you couldn't get in the bike club. At Hearn Hill, you can hardly walk for cycles at the Easter meeting. But the trouble, as British cyclists beat some of the world's best in major events, the foreigners usually sweep the board. There's quite a Dominion flavour too, including a track champ from Australia. What was it like cycling in the 50s and 60s? I spoke to Ray Pascoe, ex-racing cyclist and lifelong cycling fan. I remember the first time I went to Herne Hill, I, I remember seeing Reg Harris race there. He was a very famous professional world champion, five times world champion. And when I saw him race at Herne Hill, I thought I'd like to do that, you know. I'd like to whiz around the track. I eventually uh, joined the club, as I said, and, and started to race on the track. I was never good as, uh, as Reg Harris was. Maybe I didn't train enough, but I enjoyed it anyway. I enjoyed riding, uh, reading the magazines and going out with the guys on the club run and riding the meetings, which were due generally on a Saturday afternoon or sometimes midweek on a Wednesday. Uh, and I remember back then, all the cyclists that raced there, whatever level, they were all white cyclists. There were never any black cyclists. There was only one guy I remember who was a black cyclist. His name was Roy Harrison, and he was a member of the Polytechnic Cycling Club. And they called him Snowball, a, a, a nickname. And he didn't mind that at all. And he used to race. He was quite good. But he was the only one I remember being a black cyclist. Of course, Morris Burton came along much later on in the late 70s, 80s. And apart from Morris and now his son Jermaine, I, I don't really know anybody. I don't really know why there hasn't been many black cyclists over the years. 
Maybe it's because they lack a bit of track skill or a bit of um, confidence in handling a bike. Sure, they've got the power, boxers, weightlifters, footballers, uh, sprinters, but cyclists maybe, why I don't know, I think it could be they lack a bit of track skill. Regarding cycling on television, when I first joined the club back in 58, there was no cycling on television, nothing. It wasn't until the late 60s we started to see the Tour de France on the world of sport. And then gradually these other one-day races came along. Now, of course, with Eurosport, you get the big races, you get the Tour de France every day live. But in my day, when I first started, there was nothing. There was no black cyclist. Maybe it was a class thing. Maybe some black cyclists thought it was a bit of a, a sissy sport, riding a bike fast. Oh no, they want to be a boxer, they want to be a sprinter, basketball player but not a cyclist. Most professional athletes get into their sport from a young age. I wanted to find out from an experienced coach at Hernhill Velodrome, whose son races at national level. Phil regularly coaches fellow Club de Londres youth riders. They need support, but they need to come from a kind of bike culture family. There are a few that don't, but the majority of the kids you see doing really well and start getting competitive tend to come from a family that's already cycling and already out going long rides. Do you think that support from a family is really important? Um, and do you think that that could have a massive effect on, a, say, think, an ethnic minority child to, to really get into a sport and make it at a high level? Yeah, I think to make it a high level these days, to make it a high level in sport, you've got to have support from your family, because particularly in cycling, it's your parents who are going to be taking you to all the events. Um, and the equipment as well, getting you all the equipment. So, and. I just think, that when you look at the kids who are doing well, who come from here and do well, a, a lot of them have family support. Not all of them, not all of them, there's a couple of exceptions. Uh, and the club is doing all it can to support, support them. But I wonder whether that's behind it, that you don't... Because there's not so much of a culture in black communities for road cycling, um, that it then doesn't get passed on to the kids. So Why do you think that is? I just think it's a culture thing that's never happened. It's not, it's not been a sport they've been into. I was saying the other day that if you go to the BMX track, kids got into BMX. There is a, a, a culture of BMX in black kids. So you kids. believe that certain disciplines almost yeah. can vary between the, the, yeah, the yeah, participants yeah. involved? I think so, yeah. And the, and the cycling, the sort of British cycling scene, has yet to become one that's a kind of black scene. I, I hope, hope it will. I asked Peter Catamol. Velo Club de Londres chairman if there are any other barriers to prevent cyclists from joining bike clubs. I joined the Velo Club Londres when I was an 11 year old because I couldn't join my father's own club. Yeah. Because you were 11? Because I was so 11. Purely on age. Absolutely. So the Velo Club Londres was set up basically for people like me who couldn't join traditional bike clubs. When I joined you suddenly then found that there were all the other people who couldn't join bike clubs as well. Lots of young boys, okay. And then there were females. So you had a couple of females in their 20s, maybe even early 30s, who again were banned due to club constitutions from joining other clubs. Now, it was also very noticeable that our club and possibly one other in South London, which had a large Afro-Caribbean population, actually had no black members. So right. only our club had black members and one other club. All the other clubs didn't. So the VCL essentially was set up to welcome and open members who may not be allowed or accepted into other clubs? Absolutely, that's what it was set up for. But as I say, it was set up really to accept young riders. But I think a byproduct of having a, an open membership yeah, was that we then attracted other people who couldn't get into bike clubs. After speaking to Peter, he told me I should speak to ex-professional cyclist Morris Burton. Born in London to an English mother and a Jamaican father, Morris Burton was the first black British champion. In 1973, aged 17, Morris was junior sprint national champion. At 18, amateur 20 km scratch national champion. 19, team pursuit national champion. And in 1985, Morris was fourth in the European Madison Championships. Morris told me he suffered racial discrimination throughout his career and was even booed as he crossed the line to victory in the 1974 British National Championships at aged 18. Now retired, Morris owns Diverse Cycles in Norbury, South London. I wanted to know more. I came there and I, I, I didn't show no mercy to anyone. I was there, it was quite obvious what I was there for. And um, it did put a few people's noses out of joint a little bit. They didn't bit. like that? 
there was people involved in the sport in those days who were quite happy for cycling to remain a minor sport, I think, because by keeping it a minor sport, they were able to have their little piece of power. If the sport got too big, then they knew that they, they, where they were in the sport, they wouldn't be there anymore. Not necessarily the riders, although there was, there was some riders who didn't like me around. I mean, I can tell you now, I won't mention names, but there, there definitely was riders who, when I turned junior and raced at Crystal Palace against seniors, that when they got beaten by me, that they never rode another race again. I then spoke to Jermaine Burton, the eldest of Morris's three children. Jermaine was under 16 national champion, progressed through British Cycling's Olympic Development Programme, and now at 19, he is currently on British Cycling's under 23 programme. Has cycling changed from the 70s? Personally, I never really um, looked at my, at my race as a, as a barrier of any sort, or as, as any reason why I shouldn't feel comfortable participating in cycling. There are one or two other, other black riders or riders of mixed race. So they may have, have uh, one parent of Caribbean or African origin that I know in and around London, mainly given the ethnic diversity in London. Um, but yeah, I mean, on a whole, um, just looking in Britain without even going much further than that, um, there aren't many black riders and me personally, I've I've been told that I've, uh, some riders younger than, younger than me look up to me as a role model and feel proud that I can that riders can uh, look at me as a role model and sort of aspire to try and achieve what they feel they uh, they like to in sport without you know, feeling that there's any reason why they shouldn't on a on a social level being um, in the school the school I was primary school and well, mainly secondary school as well. A lot of black, a lot of my black friends took interest in football, basketball, um, mainly because it's just there are two sports um, that well, black people are prominent in. And uh, I just, I think they, they find that it's easier to, easier to sort of fit in um, it's more socially acceptable, they feel more comfortable and it's sort of within, within their comfort zone and I think that they wouldn't really know how to go about getting involved in cycling and, um, and maybe, maybe, maybe even be embarrassed because of the image of young people thinking you know, cyclists wearing a uh, wearing latex shorts and you know, tight jerseys and everything looks a bit sort of, you know, maybe isn't the most masculine image that, um, that a lot of teenage boys aspire to. But um, personally, I actually have um, at least once, I can remember experience um, racial discrimination. It was actually in Belgium. Um, in a junior commess race out there a couple of years ago. Uh, I was in a break with a rider and uh, they didn't like what I was riding and uh, decided to call me a nigger. And uh, sort of, well, I actually approached his dad after the race and uh, to be honest, I'm not, um, I'm not a very aggressive person. I mean, I felt you know, I needed to say something about it, but I didn't, I didn't need to, I didn't feel like I needed to, I don't feel like I gained anything from going over, going over to him and trying to beat him up maybe, but even, even maybe if I could, but I, I don't feel like I gained anything from it, but I was surprised to find actually his dad didn't really care. He just gave me a, a blank look and just, I like, didn't say anything. Um, which at the time, sort of made me more like, angry than, than anything. Um, but upset. I mean, it didn't. It didn't bother me in the respect that it wasn't going to affect my bike riding. But it was a. Uh, it was a shame to know that it still goes on. I went back to Hernhill. 
I wanted to get other people's opinions on why cycling is a predominantly white sport. I spoke to Hernhill Velodrome Cycling Development Officer Ian Cook, who is a member of the Velo Club de Londres and races at national level. What did he think? I think it's something that's on the up with cycling as a whole. I mean, you know, cycling was very much a minority sport. It's growing now. Um, so if you're looking for a minority within a minority sport, it's obviously going to be quite difficult. Why do you think it's cycling is a minority sport? It just never was that big a deal, in Britain at least. Um, there was never the success of it. It was you know, small numbers of people doing it compared to now. I think British cycling's membership's increased well over 100%. Especially through years. the success of the GB cycling team at the yeah, previous exactly. two Olympics. Yeah, so and I think with that eventually you're likely to see more black riders coming through. So Particularly you, if you think about a professional level, which you are. It takes riders, what, four or five years of solid training to get anywhere near that to level. To even break the route. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, like with every sport. So as it grows there's going to be a delay on that. So potentially in a few years time could be looking at an improved situation. And I think at the lower levels it is. Um, it is becoming more evenly distributed or more representative. I think you're getting more, you know, down here a couple of the best sprinters who've started in the last three or four years are black riders in their mid twenties. One of them's in our club, one of them was but then went on to a sponsored team. If you look at the track league, so again lower level racing, you know, in the top ten, one of the guys is black and one of the guys is Arabic. Which, compared to the sport as a whole, particularly outside of London, compared to, you know, it's quite a high proportion. So I think we're kind of ahead of the curve on it. Maybe that's because it's a big city, like every major city you go yeah, to find I think people from ethnic minorities. It's going to happen, you get more people riding, you get more people from ethnic minorities. And, you know, there's more, the, a greater proportion of the population are... Black. So Do you think that more black riders? if Hernhill was in a different part of the country, say up north, do you think that you'd have the same number of eth ethnic minorities and especially black riders coming to the track? What's your I opinion on that? severely doubt it. I think it's just, you know, you're playing the numbers on it essentially. Do you think that the discipline involved within cycling as a whole, for example track cycling, road cycling, mountain biking, cyclocross, BMX, do you think that the discipline can have a massive effect on the type of riders that get involved with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, you know, if you look at something like BMXing, it's more of a street thing and a city thing. Considered it's cool, which is Yeah, it's considered cool. Whereas something like road cycling, you know, you wear lycra and you shave your legs. But you don't in BMX? Not, no, you don't. You don't wear lycra. You wear baggies and you presume, I'm not sure if they shave their legs or not. So it's definitely not as obviously a linked thing. You don't. Yeah. And shaving your legs again is, is not considered... It's not something you'd call cool, at any rate. Whilst I was at Hearn Hill, coming to the end of my journey, I had the good fortune to speak to two of Morris Burton's friends and clubmates, Delroy Riley and Junior Black. My name's uh, Delroy Riley, I'm um, 49 years old here. I've been in cycling since 1996 here. In 1998, I um, bought my first bike from Morris Burton in Devere Cycles here. I um, started riding with them since 98, 99, and uh, we do a lot of sportives and a lot of rides here, all over there. Now, my first experience, apart from Morris with riding, was I um, wanted to ride for some local club there, some time trials, but my first experience when I went to uh, a club there weren't really good there. It's a club that right down here, I'll tell you before, that used to be Beck Cycle there. And I was introduced there by a colleague of mine there, and I went down there and I was supposed to do a time trial there. I turned up for the time trial and I just didn't get like any help or anyone said anything to me. And you know, that really put me off cycling for a bit. So what I decided to do there, I decided to look for a club that is not multicultural, but a, a cycling club that everyone from all colours and creed can actually ride in. And we've got the same goal as riding and helping each other. And when I found uh, Morris's um, shop there, it was a whole load of experience, help and give you little tidbits in that there. And I've been riding there ever since. I do notice that in the cycling world, 
there's not many black people who do cycle out there. I'm not quite sure if it's mainly to do with sponsors, um, funding or whatever, but I think in general you only quite see us out there doing the 100 metres or maybe the odd boxing, well yeah, boxing. I don't know if the sponsors are easier there or something, but um, why the fact there's not many cyclists, black cyclists in cycling, I have no idea. What I have noticed in getting into sports is that I wouldn't say that there's much racism that I've experienced in sports. I've probably more experienced racism more in my work um, surroundings, um, but not so much in sports. The only thing I would say I've experienced in sports is that there's a lot of ego and um, it's not quite good um, as well as I don't know how friendly this sort of industry is regarding how others are there to help one another get forwards. To do that they may feel threatened themselves um, but as I say there's a lot of ego. Overall it is very clear that the number of white cyclists heavily outweigh the number of black cyclists at both professional and amateur level. In order for this to change, I think we need to see more black cyclists on TV, more role models that young black people can look up to and aspire to be like. I feel that there are a lot of negative stereotypes within cycling and maybe young black people feel that the stigma attached to cycling isn't something they want to be associated with, be it in the clothes that they wear or the things that cyclists do, like shaving their legs. With the success of British Cycling's team, the number of people that currently cycle has increased. Around half of British Cycling members take part in some form of off-road cycling. Nine in ten British Cycling members participate in some sort of road cycling. And with 50,000 members in 2012 and 75,000 members in 2013, this is a great increase for British Cycling. Hopefully, with the success of people like Jermaine Burton, this can give young black riders the urge to get on a bike and try it.